Next up, a play written by a Texan about a horrible fire in Boston at the Coconut Grove nightclub nearly 75 years ago. On a November night in 1942, 492 people were killed, hundreds more injured when the city's premier nightclub, well over capacity, caught fire. Deadliest such fire in U.S. history. Through this weekend, a play about it called Inferno is being staged at the Boston Center for the Arts less than a mile from where the nightclub once stood. Joining me now is the man who wrote and directed the work, James Hanson Prince. James, it's great to see you. Thank so you. how's a guy from Richardson, Texas get interested in this horrible fire 2,000 miles away? My wife's uh, grandmother had a nephew that died in the fire. They were close in age because she was late to, to her family's birth. And, um, and so when he passed away, it affected her a lot. So she told me about it. And then uh, I said, sounds like it'd make a great play. And I started to research just him. And I realized what an incredibly large story this so was. So it wasn't just a favor to a, fam a family member, the story. Gradually. Right, it started that way. Yeah. And the play's not just a recreation. Tell people how you tell the story in uh, Inferno. It's basically broken into three parts. Uh, the first part is um, where they were uh, when the fire started, how, how they got there, a little bit about their history, their mm -hmm. personal history, and then also the history of Boston. And then in the second uh, phase, it's where they were when the fire broke out. And then the third phase is how did it affect them? Where did they end up? And, and most of the players were real, right? I mean, there are a couple of fictional yeah. characters, I think a reporter or something. Yeah, right? we, have, we have 23 characters played by 14 actors and 22 of them are real. There's Mayor one. at the time, Mayor the Tony. owner of the club. And how about the, was it the 16 year old busboy who was blamed probably wrongly for having lit a match that started the fire? So well, he, he's portrayed in the thing too, yes? yeah? Yeah, he, he, he was, given uh, responsibility for the fire. He's not responsible for it. I believe he did start the fire, but I don't believe he's responsible for it. Did I read that you, you were producing this in Richardson before you brought it here? Right. You had never been to Boston when you wrote this thing? No, I had so not. So how did you, how'd you get a feel? I mean, people, uh, we Bostonians feel outsiders like you. How <laughs> dare you? But how'd you get a feel? Well, for the city and its there's, history. There's four excellent books written on the subject, so I started with that. And then also the National Fire Protection Association has this incredible archive of, of all the testimonies from people. There's also videos of some of the survivors that are obviously, when they did the video, they're in their 70s and 80s and, and now 90s or, or they've passed mm -hmm. away. So drawing from, from all of that. And, and mm -hmm. no one had ever done a play about this before? You know, That's I was rather a, surreal. I was amazed. I, 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 I saw this story and I said, well, let's go look for a play. And there was no play about it. There's been no movie about it. There's been small documentaries, uh, one on HBO, which you cannot find a copy mm. of. I've tried. Uh, if people who live through this or survivors of people who didn't live through this, I should say, have they seen it? And if they have, I assume they have, have they reached out to you? Yeah. And oh, what, even when we read it and uh, did the play in Dallas, I had people in the audience who were from Boston who had family members that were associated with the fire. Either they were, the parents were in it or relatives were in it or they helped to uh, get people out, haul the bodies out because obviously there were not enough people to, to take care of all the, the actual logistics of moving all of those injured people. And so taxi drivers, people driving by in trucks and, and everybody through all the... Um, the hospital and the medical, there, there were just thousands and thousands of people that were, that were directly involved in this. How hard has it been for people who had some connection to this or the people involved to see this? Yeah, yeah. It's one that, thing to have it back in your history. It's another thing to have it in front of your face. Right. What's that been I like? I had now? a lady, and this is actually in Texas. Since I've been here, every night I'm getting people telling me stories. That's I'm great. getting emails every night, every night. But in Texas, I had a lady call me and said, look, I really appreciate you doing this, but I don't think I can see it. And I said... Get a friend, someone you trust, come see the show. And after the show, she was crying, we're hugging each other, she kissed my cheek, she said, thank you, thank you for doing this. So I, it's, it, it, there's a healing in this place. I assume people know that it, as horrible as this was, a lot of good things came out of it. I mean, the doors open inward, which is surreal. Right. Now all doors open outward. Many more exits, next to a revolving door where there was a huge log jam, you have to have static, regular kinds of doors. Right. So there are many good, so is this just a story? I don't mean that in a pejorative way. Is it a story or is it a story with a moral? What is it? I, I believe theater, if it doesn't enlighten and educate people, it's useless. For, yeah, it has to entertain. Theater should always entertain. But if it doesn't come away with, with a purpose that changes people's lives and gives them hope, then, the, then it's pointless. So yeah, we, we actually end this story with a small segment of the Rhode Island fire, which was a microcosm mm. of the Coconut Hundred Grove fire. People, yeah, yeah and, and that was just 2003. I mean, it was so close to us now. So how are you going to feel if I do a play about riches in Texas? Are you going to be okay with that? <laughs> come on, man. I don't care. James, I hear it's great. Can't wait to see it. Congratulations. Lots of luck with All it. Right.